Bienvenidos, bienvenidas, damas y caballeros, a un nuevo episodio de Bushing Cast. Qué bueno estar pudiendo decir esto una vez más. Qué alegría. Santi, ¿cómo estás, mi amigo? Perfecto, estamos acá muy contentos, dando este, este evento tan, tan especial. Esta oportunidad tan, tan única. Así es, eh, para todos los que nos estén escuchando ahora... Eh, vamos a hablar mayormente en inglés, así que aprovechen estas palabras porque después nada, estuvimos practicando para poder eh, eh, hablar con nuestro invitado de, de una manera más eh, fluida. Aunque nos podemos llegar a llevar una sorpresa. Antes sepan, que nada. Sepan también disculpar la pronunciación algún, y algún tipo palabras. de error. Claro. Uh -huh. eh, antes que nada, quiero, queremos agradecer de corazón a Gray Anderson eh, que ha hecho. Es gran parte responsable de que este encuentro se haya podido dar Y obviamente también a Oscar Barocera Que también es bar gran responsable de todo esto Y gran, eh, ¿cómo decirlo? Eh, supporter of the, del programa Así que un abrazo enorme a ellos dos eh, Y gracias, gracias por tanto A partir de ahora empezamos a hablar en inglés So People from all over the world That They are the other side of the screen. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, Santi and I say hello to you. Sorry if our English level is not so good. We're going to do our best for everybody. So today we're going to have a first part, like I say, with a question from us, from Santi and I. And uh, later we're going to open the Q&A for our special guest today. So hold your uh, uh, questions in the chat. So try to wait for that moment so we don't get lost uh, when when the chat is open okay so ladies and gentlemen now introduce to you a martial artist a life a lifetime martial artist he's direct student of ishizuka gyokoryu soke hatsumi's also a student uh, he's been a translator of their classes. He has a PhD in Japanese history and culture from the Inalco. He's all the author of several books like Ninja, Ancient Shadow Warriors of Japan, Ninpo, Ninjutsu, Le Hombre de la Lumière, sorry, pardon my French, <laughs> Budo Sho, <laughs> Budo Sho, <laughs> part one, and also the latest work, uh, Takamatsu Toshitsugu, Ninja Master of the 20th Century. And of course, hundreds of hundreds of articles related to the classical martial arts and Japanese culture. So, straight out of Paris, with here with us, the Dr. Kasem Sogari. Hello, Kasem, how are you today? Hello, hello, hello. Thank you very much. I'm fine, I hope you will. I hope you well, Javier. I hope you well, Santi. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thanks, of course, to Oscar and Graham who vouch for yourself and uh, everyone. Of course, also, I want to thank Omitsukage because, of course, without them, I won't be there. And, of course, the Yugi Shumpan, uh, the uh, editor of the book of Takamo Sensei. And all of you who are here, so thank you very much. Okay. So, and thank to you for all your time and uh, generosity, too chat here with us uh, a little bit Hello. so ready for break the ice well you know there is no ice for me so anytime. <laughs> well if you have to choose between uh tupac shakur and dr dre <laughs> well you know for me it's like uh, the story who start the eggs or uh the uh chicken i don't check i take both they are both good <laughs> right <laughs> I like to pack for the rhyme. I like to pack for the energy. I like to pack for uh, uh, what he brings. But you know, without uh, the sounds and the genius of Dr. Dre, you have nothing. As long as you have a very good beat behind, that's what is more important. Without beat, you know, me, if he doesn't have the rhythm, yeah. what we call in Japanese classical martial art, choshi or hyoshi, well, without that, no, nah. <laughs> So West Coast all the way, right? <laughs> well, West Coast, East Coast, you know, if whatever the music is good, I'm, I'm there. Yeah, nice. nice. <laughs> so uh, I bring this, uh, the hip hop uh, and the Dr. Dre too and Tupac because, uh, you know, you will be doing the Confinement Chronicles, you know, it's got some experience in the Chronicles, you know, of Dr. Dre. 
And the question is, is uh, how how do you be in this uh, three years with the COVID situation, uh, the practice, and uh, you, you know how how did you manage all this uh, chaos, pandemic, and changes? How did I manage? Good question. I, I don't think I ask. To, to tell you the truth of, I mean, like everyone, first of all, you know, it, it come on, it came on you, it comes came on you. So if you cannot adapt yourself, there is no, it's impossible to manage. So instead of talking management, uh, I prefer or use the word adaptation. First, you take it because you don't have choice, and then you embrace it. If you don't want to embrace it anyway, it's too strong for you, so you take it. So uh, I take it as everyone. Uh, some of course died, huh? uh, some lost uh, relatives, some lost good friends and uh, all around the world. Uh, I've lost a lot of friends, I love family too. I almost passed. Uh, I didn't know, I didn't know. Now, you never know until you're in. It's the same for martial arts, same for everything. You never know until you're in. You don't really realize. So then I mean, and uh, I don't think he changed the practice. I don't think he, he changed the studies. The good thing is I could wrote a free book. So it give you a lot of time for work too. I mean, yes, 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 yes. I mean, most of the time I have, I, I, I wrote a lot on, I have many things on the computer, on many hard drive. I read a lot. And, uh, but uh, when you're doing seminar and lecture, most of the time you don't have time to uh, sit and write what you need. And at this time, I had the plenty of time to practice when, like I used to, but also to uh, write down things. So it gives a little bit more perspective. At the same time, I think um, beside, of course, the very uh, negative aspect, uh, there is a very good aspect. Apparently during the first, uh, from last year, March to uh, April, May, uh, the nature took back is, um, is uh, how can I say this kingdom in a certain way, less uh, pollution, uh, many, many good things for the nature. But at the same time, people were living, you know, in a big um, project, uh, people who didn't have a job, people, who, it was very difficult and people who could not finally uh, stay together because, uh, you know, with the work, they just see on the night, they does not see the kids, etc. Some have learned to, let's say, the readapt themselves to the family uh, life. And some divorce, some stop, some quit, some kills, some died, some did awful seriously. Um, there is a saying, when you close, when you put someone in a box, something change. Mm -hmm. When you put someone in jail or in a cave or anything like that, something happened in his heart. Why, for example, in every spirituality in the world, there is this aspect of retreat, retirement in the yeah. mountain, in a monastery, or uh, in a place where you're going to practice on yourself because you want to uh, come back into the source to go deep down inside your heart and see what you can um, bring it back to the origin bring it back in order to refresh yourself or just sometimes you know to understand this kind of disposition of the heart huh? mm. some something in your heart that will allow you to reconsider what you forget what you didn't consider, what you didn't expect, what you didn't pay attention. Family, kids, life, health, surrounding, life, work. Just measuring this. In classical martial art, we call this Hakari Goto. Hakari Goto, it's not just the fact of searching about war. It's to understand how everything will change, why. And for that, you need, of course, to question, see, observe, and study. So, uh, did it change the practice no practice was the practice before and it was before and it was after and it was between so actually it was nice for me it didn't change in that case give me more time to write and to reflect on writing but i was also in a in a, i mean you could see i did a confinement chronicle so it was every day every day uh, between 40 minutes sometimes one hour talking in the front of the camera about one thing about classical martial art, and I did this one month. Uh, then during that year, I did also uh, in Omitsukage the Ichinichi, Ichinichi Ichigokui, one day, one Gokui, that I, the last one's gonna be uh, released very soon. So one year, two per month, 
Uh, and I'm used to go to America and Canada where there is a very good student, very uh, um, good people with who I practice and train. And that was a way to stay connected. Then I did also some lecture. So uh, it didn't really change. It was the uh, same. We just adapt. That's the that's what human being is about. And that's what ninjutsu is at the ultimate point is about. You cannot do that. Don't practice martial arts. Don't practice ninjutsu. You cannot do that. Shame on you. You're gonna get hurt or killed. <laughs> Let... Well, yes. Uh, if you if you're not killed or if you don't die, which is uh, the extreme, of course, uh, you get hurt. But if you don't understand why you get hurt, if you don't uh, take the uh, teaching or the reason or the sign inside the hurting aspect, uh, it's just hurting. Now it goes deeper. There is always some consequences and some reason. And uh, if you have a little bit of openness and the spirit to open yourself, well, you can learn a lot and understand that actually uh, we learn, we grow through pain. It's only, it's, it's strange, but uh, everything is about sufferness. Hmm. And the opposite, we don't want to suffer. But if you don't suffer, you don't grow. Hmm. It's, it's the same, the suffer and the pain, because pain is inevitable, but suffer, you know, that's... You know, what I like in uh, the word pain, you have ain, the same ain in gain and again. So actually, you know, in pain, again, there is a gain. Mm. You talk about Tupac, so I have to do some rhyme. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> in the best way, of course, but I try. We, we have prepared some beats, you know, so <laughs> for a freestyle. Yeah. Don't <laughs> get me on that. <laughs> you, have to, you have to prepare the beat. Send me a beat. <laughs> so, uh, we we talk about the present, and uh, we're gonna start from the beginning. You know, how is uh, be a teenager in Paris? Uh, start the martial arts way, and uh, how is it with the ninjutsu boom in that at that time? Uh, I'm born in 1972 in Paris, and. Um... Lucky I was living in a big city. And even if I was living in a big city, you didn't have uh, all the martial arts in the 80s. A little bit of Kung Fu here, mainly Karate Shotokan, uh, where I'm living, project. Uh, it's quite difficult to be uh, to have access to this. You have to pay. So most of the time we have the street mm. and uh, uh, there is a lot of Muay Thai uh, and strange things in the street in the blocks. So that's the first things. And uh, I did a little bit of Karate Shotokan when I was uh, about uh, seven or eight. Was fun, but uh, one year, not much. Then I turned to something called, uh, at that time, full contact. So it was, they call this La Box American. So it was a mix of Karate where you have gloves and you can attack uh, very strong. There is the back fist, etc. That was yeah. something that they bring from America. And that was really cool. But uh, the reason why I rolled is because I like the, all the protection they had looks like a Robocop. I mean, since I was a teenager, I was always attracted by everything, things uh, that deals with, um, uh, uh, you know, suit, uh, Marvel stuff, Zorro, Batman. I mean, that's something, even now, you know, when I when I have to watch a Justice, Justice League or anything, you can ask everyone, especially in the States, I mean, Daryl, Brandon, uh, Josh, everyone, everyone. Chris, Stefan, uh, uh, I had to watch the movies and I always come and look the suit. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So that's something that I've, I think turned me a lot when I was young. And uh, when the first time I saw a ninja costume, wow. <laughs> well, I was, uh, <laughs> the virus was in, complete. <laughs> Complete. I think the virus was already in, and the ninja costume just amplify what already in. So the the mix of uh, martial art Bruce Lee plus Zoro El Soro, the yeah. idea also of uh, the black. No one knows his identity. You know that's Marvel stuff, Spider Man, Wolverine, blah blah blah. Everything superposed together. Plus James Bond, the ninja is so cool. He has so many gadget and tricked we don't know and he disappears and he has those kind of man he strike one time you know he doesn't play the... 
which I like very much because with my five brother, woo, my mother have scream on us. Yeah, my father a bit on us. <laughs> any any Bruce Lee movies or Jackie Chan, we had to fight. <laughs> with with Rocky was a little bit different because we didn't have the boxing gloves. Thanks God. <laughs> so it starts like that. And uh, when uh, the uh, Ninja Boom uh, arrived, I was uh, 13, 14 years old. 14 years old. Okay. First movie I watched was, uh, of course, in French, the name is Ultime Violence. In English, is Enter the Ninja hmm. with Shokozuki. And at that moment, I knew that I'm going to become a ninja. <laughs> <laughs> I had to play this. Now I was completely, man. I mean, you have to understand. Imagine in the 80s or 70s, you do a movie like The Avenger right now or uh, Jurassic Park at that time. It, it will touch anyone. It's like Star Wars. When Star Wars went out, all the people went into um, uh, visual effect, etc., etc. It turned, it changed a lot of things. So you have to understand that the first time they put a ninja like that, I mean, you need to imagine I'm I'm a teenager. I mean, even a kid in my mind. I still thinking with the Shuko, we can climb <laughs> stone wall. When I saw this, I was like that, you know, guy in Los Angeles during the summer, full sun, wearing in black. <laughs> of course, it's impossible in reality. I even try, you know. I had, I bought those Taiwan stuff and I try, man. Shame on me, shame on me. But, you know, it's fun. It's fun. I remember <laughs> when we put first time on the concrete. Hey, it doesn't work. Well, why it works on him? It doesn't work for us. Oh, we don't have any power. So, come on, man. Then we had with a hammer, I know that, you know, if it works. <laughs> then finally, when in inside, you can get it out. How he did the guy? <laughs> so that's how it starts. And, and I remember uh, my first uh, ninja clothes. I wear it like I wear Spider-Man stuff. <laughs> I was thinking each time I wear it, I'm going to have some superpower. <laughs> <laughs> you can feel the power when you wear it entering your yes, body. Yes, doing <laughs> movement in front of the, of the, of the mirror. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Kids. Yeah, Kids. yeah. Uh, so uh, that's, how that's how it started. And then, of course, uh, uh, I took uh, back in the days a magazine uh, known as Karate, uh, magazine of martial arts, sports martial arts. Went at what the, the yellow page at the end where there is the club address. Yeah, and all the phone numbers. The, yeah, phone numbers, call. One question: There is Shuriken. There is the the hood. Yes, I'm coming. I sign. I am. Back in the days, you know, the name of Bujinkan it didn't really exist. I mean, it exists, but not as an organization and things like that yet. Hmm. For that would be uh, the topic for another story. And, and, and how do you pass from that uh, ninjutsu art uh, class to the Bujinkan or, uh, well, yeah, Bujinkan? Well, the teacher, uh, the, the, I mean, the magazine I find, there is a teacher on this who said he just came back from Japan and it's true, he was coming back from Japan. Of course, half of it was a bullshit what he was saying inside. That I saw it later on when I went in Japan myself and a little bit before. Uh, but uh, he went in Japan, met Hatsumi Sensei, met Ishizuka, met Ishizuka Sensei, and that's how um, I end up in his dojo. Mm. That's it. And uh, at that moment, there is the movie and the reality. Um, hmm. <laughs> and what about the smoke? <laughs> so, I, I mean, for one year, I handle tight, you know, I hang tight just in order to see when we're going to do it. And when finally we do it, did it, I, I found it, it sucks. It sucks. It killed the dreams, but I still have the dream. Okay. <laughs> But it was, I mean, you know, it was really fun. I didn't know the guy was uh, showing things he pretend he had in Japan, which was one, which was not true. He took things from book, mm. uh, mixing things. That's what we have in France, and that's what everyone had in Europe. Few people who could go in Japan back in those days, but didn't stay much over there. You know, uh, beside uh, maybe uh, Mark O'Brien, uh, then Mark Lisgo. English guy, Marco Brian is an American guy, then after Andrew Young and few other. 
They were in Japan and they stayed there. Uh, they went there around, you know, 84, 85, but still it was very difficult for them. They didn't know Japanese, they didn't speak Japanese and they had also to adapt because, you know, I'm going there to learn with the master, but all those people have a job. It doesn't do this every day. It's not like uh, the uh, Japan Karate Association, GK or Aikikai or Kodokan where you have class every day, etc., etc. <laughs> this didn't exist. Even Hatsumi Sensei, we can say it in a certain way, was... Um, he was not really running a big dojo. He was teaching uh, in each dojo of, uh, of course, Shizuka Sensei, uh, Noguchi Sensei, uh, what else, uh, uh, Somea, and one class in Tokyo in a place in Shinagawa, which was quite far away from Noda, uh, very far away, uh, Shinagawa, and it was the, the name of the place was the Haina Kaikan. So before he started to teach in the uh, uh, Budokan. Uh, Ayase Budokan. And Ayase Budokan he started to teach over there around uh, 93, 93, 94. Mm. So if, you, if you're not aware about those dates, uh, you can see just by looking on the video of Quest. Uh, the first Nimpo training video was on Ishizuka Sensei's dojo, Kashiwa Dojo. That was there. You can see when Ishizuka Sensei, there is also uh, Nagato uh, Shihan inside. They were doing, they were demonstrating technique in the front of the camera. And together so that was that and that was already 1991 so around 1992 1993 especially 19 this is where Hatsumi Sensei started to do the Daiko Myosai in Ayase so Ayase in the uh, Tokyo Budokan and in the train station called Ayase and now from that this is where he started to teach there twice per week and sometimes in Noda uh, to the foreigner who comes so, so, so when you go to Japan, I mean, uh, uh, it was difficult for the foreigner. And that's first, he doesn't speak Japanese. They go here and there. You know, you it's like you go to many restaurants, different flavor. Sooner or later, you're gonna have a big diary and you're gonna go on toilet. You're gonna have a lot of problems. And then, and the and the other foreigner who didn't have time because of job, because of life, who were coming in Japan, they stay two weeks, maximum one month. Then they come back, and sometimes it's not enough. Then, of course, they are between, most of them, they were between promotion, have a dojo, uh, the solo practice. Uh, I mean, when you look the way they move now, most of them, you understand that the solo practice doesn't look like, for example, in my case, Ishizuka Sensei doesn't look like, it doesn't look like what Ishizuka Sensei does. And uh, most of them, they are not flexible like Hatsumi Sensei was until uh, recently. Mm. So uh, the information we have in, the, in France back in those days, was close to zero, mixed of book. I mean, I was 14 anyway, I didn't care. I mean, I, I, as long as you feed me. But then step by step, the idea of going in Japan came because you, you uh, well, I could see things were not really, uh, because around um, 88, 89, Hatsumi Sensei was already doing, uh, dai, um, sorry, Taikai uh, in Europe, in America. But around 88, 89, 90, you have the primary tape of Hatsumi Sensei. The first one is called Introducing to the Togaku Ryu Technique. And the second one is Foundation of Taijutsu. And I had a chance to saw that. When I saw that, I said, I don't understand why teachers claim to be six dan or whatever. Why what we do in class doesn't look like what it does. I mean, question is very simple. Of course, I'm not asking you to be like Hatsumi Sensei or like Shizuka Sensei or like the other, but at least, a little bit of resemblance, similitude, we said in French. All right? Nothing. Zero. So that was the first doubt. Second doubt is everything I was learning in a work in the street. And that was very important for me where I live and um, where most of the family and everything I do, we belong. That's mm. what it is to be a teenager in Paris back in those days. And even now, even worse because of the drug and stuff like that. I mean, I know most of those, those kind of things. Never tried, but I know a lot of people in. Mm. So that's what shaped me a little <laughs> bit, not much. <laughs> so, uh, and between this conflict, you know, this doubt, and when you decide to be part, um, you travel to Japan uh, right away. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Man. When I'm 16, 17, you think my father was going to let me go? <laughs> uh, no, I didn't work like that. My father didn't want, but my mother plays him. 
he want to go, he want to go, please let him. And uh, well, thanks to him, uh, we uh, had to find the money because it was really expensive, really expensive. Just the cost of the, the flight ticket was uh, uh, twice my father's salary, oh. monthly. And me, I took, I mean, I, I already, uh, I went in Algeria, North, North Africa, Spain, but Japan, we're talking about, uh, uh, it was not, there is no direct flight back in those days, like mm. direct flight to Japan. You had to do, uh, I mean, maybe if it exists to me, it didn't exist right now, it was too much expensive. But the one I took, I remember was Korean Airline, it was that too long. I never had, a, and that was the first time I saw a TV on the plane. Monochrome, of course, it was not color. <laughs> right. But it was, uh, it was what it is. So thanks to my father, I could uh, go there. Well, before I left, he said to me, you're going to lose all the money and in three days you're back. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I stayed two months, like I said. But <laughs> yes, and he was right. I lost all the money. I mean, <laughs> then he come back. I came back and I did come back in three days. It was a question of pride. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's... Pride. I mean, that's how it, it happened. I mean, there is those doubt and uh, maybe, uh, honestly speaking, I think there is a window that opened for me at that moment and everything matched. Everything was uh, going to this and that's how it works. Each time I went in Japan, I went in Japan after every four years because it was mm. really expensive. So I was working on practicing study and uh, putting money on the side. No holiday, not stuff like that for four years and then going back again. So I did the first trip in uh, uh, 1990. It was the year of 1991. Remember, then I did the second trip in 94 and then in 98. 98, I was already on the Japanese studies. I had my license. I was already doing my master's or so could speak, etc. 1994, I was uh, able to speak a little bit because I was learning by myself. After my first trip in Japan, I understood right now. I need, I don't want to be, the idea is I don't want to be play, I don't want to be a fool, and I don't want a guy when he said to me, oh, very good, oh, very nice, oh, I like the way you do. That's what we call streetwise. All right? I don't want mm -hmm. people to play anymore. So I decided to learn more, deeper. I didn't expect I'm going to do a PhD. I want, to I want to be clear on that. Huh? I just wanted to speak with Sensei and at least to listen to him because that's what I was doing. Observe and listen. That's the only thing I do. I'm still doing like this. That's the way I learn. That's the way I practice. Listen. For me, listening is practice already. Hmm. Listening also um, cultivates a certain humbleness. Listening is also uh, being aware of people. You don't just listen with your ear, you listen with your body, with your sense, with everything. Taijutsu is that, too. Right. Don't yeah. get me wrong, huh? Of course, it's about killing. But uh, if you want to be able to uh, knock down someone, you better know him before. Yeah, yeah. But that's it. That's the thing, you know. Uh, the practice is everywhere. Martial art, it's everywhere, you know. Life and is that's... practice. Life is practice. Life, life is, about, is about practicality. I said many times in the word practical, you have the word practice. If what you do is not practical, you cannot call this practice. And classical martial arts, especially uh, the nine Ryuha, um, it is all about practicality. Straight, straight, straightly based practicality. No matter what the time. Oh, I say, yes, but back in the days, they were armor and things like that. Yes, but inside the armor is a man. And uh, in all those things was conflict. So what change is what? It's just the technology. Behind that is the same strategy. It's the same human being. It's the same things. And you were talking about COVID. How, how, how do, do we manage in all those centuries back in the days when you have some big disease and epidemic? How we did? Took it. Learn it from it. Learn from your enemy. The body adapt and you move on. And you live with. That's it. That's it, but it's deep. Yeah. It takes years and centuries. And for some people, if you if you, if you want to stay down, you stay down. <laughs> That's it. Easy to say, right. not so easy to do <laughs> sometimes. 
。Of course, of course. ね、言うが優しい。やるは難しい。That's the phrase in Japanese. b e s a i d many times. If many scroll, b e s a i d やるはがたし。Doing is hard. But that's the whole、uh, point of it. If it was easy, we don't do it. We, you know, we're strange, we human beings. We want comfortable, we want everything cool, nice, and lounge. But at the same time, we are ready, you know, to put a little, little bit of effort because of the game. That's what's strange. If there is no game, no one wants to do it. And sometimes there is a game where you don't know. Most、hmm. of the time, actually. And the game you deserve is not the game you think you're going to have. So, you know, when I went in Japan first time, I don't know what to expect. Just wanted to see the real master. I only see what was the art was there. I mean, well, I was not surprised, man. I was surprised, man. Oh, yes.、Yeah. Uh, nowadays, still remember of the first class, the first in, what happened. I still remember. I still remember in the heart how I, how I felt. Betrayed.、Uh, how you felt? Betrayed. Everything I learned was shit. Everything. And no doubt on that. And the only thing I could knew is the things I find by myself. I'm not, I'm not talking about technically, I'm talking book and stuff like that. Technically, everything was shit. From the ski, from the punch, whatever. You call this a punch? Yes, it was a punch. You know what? It was, things didn't work already. There is no reason they work in Japan. I arrived, I was s h o w d o w n We were doing something in France, what we call homologation des grades. So I'm sure you understand this in Spanish.、Huh? Yes, yes,、uh, yes.、Um, it's when, for example, you have a rank and you want to get into a federation and you want to、uh, have a certain kind of certification from the federation that said what you have is true. So the teacher of that time wanted to pass into the federation in order to be legit. Because, <laughs> you know, in France, if you don't do the things in a French way, you're not legit. So you do martial art, Japanese martial art, but in a French way. That's make you legit. <laughs> anyway, so, but I understand also the rules behind that. There you have a lot, of, a lot of explanation about things like this, which I understand.、Uh, if you want to teach in a legal point, you need to follow certain rules, etc. etc. I understand. But, you know,、uh, they give PhD, they give a rank, they give also a six dan to pedophile and to stupid people and motherfucker. So, you know,、uh, the, the rank or the diploma doesn't mean nothing. Who, who is behind that? And it's always all about your name and your capacity. Don't forget that. So, I arrived in Japan、uh, and I think I'm good because I'm a shodan. I went to that homologation and I succeed. Everything was fine. First class in Ishizuka Sensei's dojo, Ogawa san, take my arm and do the uke like this, like a kid. It was like the castle. Bam! And you know what hurts the most? It's not the fact of being betrayed. Honestly, this, it's fine. I've been betrayed after, I've been betrayed also recently, more deeper. Now, what hurts is my parents, because that was very expensive. And my parents had to pay those teachers every month. And this hurts me deep because my parents, my father was a hard worker. My mother, well, I mean, I'm, I'm from a big family. I'm the elder of、uh, five brothers. And、um, going in Japan cost a lot. So I was thinking, at least, what I've learned in France, you know, you go to see your teacher, you pay your class. I mean, the, the French logical or the Western logical, I pay, I receive something. And it's true, I receive something. I receive something. But that's something. Was done was was in Japan and I was shit. Could not help me in the street, could not me help in the front of a boxer or anything, even in sports way. Oh, yes, it works in the dojo between the student and the master because you have all those kind of stupid protocols, slave protocol. I call this no, 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 that's what hurts me. My parents put a lot of things and that hurts me. That's the reason why I quit and I decided when I was there. When I would go back in France, of course,、huh? I'm a teenager 17, 16, 17, even 18. When you're just 18, you're not yet 18, you just turn 18. You need to wait the 18 years stuff. In when you get into 19 years, then you have the 18 years mind. So, always like that. Never come when you arrive 18, up, I'm 18. No, it doesn't change like I'm 18 now. <laughs> I see the face. <laughs> 
It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. So it hurts. I decided when I go back to France, I quit with all those clown, uh, all those circus, and I practice alone, alone, alone. Oh yes, you know, so like this in Japan in the front of you, and say you said that like a master when you arrive and you're alone. That's another story. It's the same things between say it and do it. Well, <laughs> thanks God I did it. I didn't have choice. I was alone anyway. So I had only three things in my mind. So Ishizuka Sensei showed the ski, so the uke and the keri, and one kata of bu. That's it. When you know how the nine school are and everything, but I still remember of them and I'm still doing them. And I quit with everyone. Everyone. So then, of course, people can say anything about me. And I still run the, the game the same way. Mm. That's how I play my game. It's not really a game, but that's how I do. And uh, you, you know, uh, <laughs> let me think very good. Uh, <laughs> relax, Javi, relax. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This uh, meeting with Ishizuka Sensei, it was uh, hard by all these uh, situations. And uh, how much time, uh, uh, how much uh, take to he considered your, uh, his student. My man, you imagine the question you ask. I mean, oh, first, first, I'm not the one you should ask that question. Okay. Because I'm just the disciple. The true question should be asked to him. That's where the story starts. Because mm. when you said, I am a student of Ishizuka Sensei, means that 90% oh look the word student estudiar I'm sure you understand come from the same word in French étudier so a student study that's it it doesn't mean and a student might have many teachers see when you're a student at school in Correggio in la Universidad you have many teachers many professors but you're going to do your PhD or your thesis under only one and still doesn't mean you're gonna have a good connection. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Uh, now, uh, a student who said that, as long as he's not recognized by the teacher, he cannot say that. It's not because you have one or two pictures with him. Let's see, then he came to his class, one or two. I have known me, first time I've met Shizuka Sensei, his dojo was completely full. Full back in the days. Complete. Everyone. From Argentina, from Spain, to Europe, to Catalonia, everyone in America used to go to Ishizuka Sensei's dojo. That was one of the places first, because Ishizuka Sensei was speaking very well English. He was the one who was translating back in the days to Hatsumi Sensei and was helping. Plus, he have a special relationship with Hatsumi Sensei that no one of the Shion have it. So whatever they can talk. The picture are there to prove and many other things that most of the people doesn't know, foreigners. And even the foreigner who live in Japan. Imagine that. <laughs> But Mr. Noguchi, Mr. Uh, Shirai, Shirai Shino, Mr. Noguchi, Mr. Nagato, everyone, even Mr. Managa, Ortan and moi, they know how Atsumi Sensei and Shizuka Sensei, they are like that, same man, same close, family wise, family, many things. So, this, what can I say? I mean, the only one who can talk about this, the answer to your question is Ishizuka Sensei. Because at the moment you think a student, maybe you're just a student or just a client. All right, you come, you pay, you teach, that's it, point. It doesn't mean you have uh, you in the heart. Being a student means first you're a disciple and we should be able to recognize him in you. Becoming the disciple of someone means that he recognizes himself in mm -hmm. what you do and in your movement. So how do I know? I don't know. I know that if I fuck up, it's finished. <laughs> so there is a difference between student and disciple. And also there is a oh. difference between um, teaching and transmission. <laughs> well, just by listening the word, whatever yeah. it is, French, English, Japanese, Spanish, whatever. Honestly speaking, you can see the difference between 
enseñar en transmisión, transmit mm -hmm. uh, and uh, teaching. It's completely different. And there is a big difference between a student and a discip disciple. Yeah, but here Spain, we have the word alumno. Alumno in Spain, it's completely different. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. It had different meanings, but one of the things that we could see here or in everywhere is that they, people use very light the the meaning of the words. Of course, because the way they practice is light. Me, since the first time in Japan, and then with age and the practice alone, start to, to, to consider a, a lot the word, the meaning, be, be, uh, there is two things. First, there is the meaning of the word, which include the history behind it. All right. Mm -hmm. And of course, everything that is with the epistemology, for example, uh, Etc. Etc. And in case of the kanji, it goes deep. But imagine when we took, for example, words. Uh, uh, when you look at uh, Latin, is what is the uh, origin of the French, uh, Italian, Spanish, etc. Etc. It is very deep. There is a lot of things besides connected with the history, philosophy, and even religion. Sometimes Greek as well, Greek philosophy, etc. Etc. So that's one. Words have a meaning, and they have a weight. A weight. And that's very important. And if they have a meaning and they have a weight, they have a direction and an orientation. So back in, if we go back to classical martial arts, why does not speak much? They act. So act have a weight, killing someone have a weight in the conscience, in the moral, in the ethic, in the history, as well as the consequences. So from that, When you use the word transmission, it's not like there is transmission, trans that go through everything. Transparent, transfiguré, all right? And you have many words with trans, transporté, all right? And then you have this aspect of mission. So it's a mission that goes through you, through you. It's not about you anymore. It's about what you carry on. So uh, a disciple, discipline himself. When you study, you don't really discipline yourself. You just study because you want the examination. You want the black belt or whatever. That's it. And when you have it, oh, fine, cool, mola, todo bien. No, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. And also, we start, sorry. No, 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 no. Yes, please. No, I, I, I would say there's also a lack of precision. You know? Like always. I mean, when you use the right word, it's like when you use, you use the right key. You need to be precise. If you want to be understood, you better choose the right word, a precise word. That's the reason why most of the master of the time of the past, they never talk much. The, the wise man doesn't talk much. He understand that there is more problem in talking too much or explain too much. It's better to stay silent. And that's the reason why words like Ishin Denshin, Mugon Mushin, huh? Transmission from heart to heart, uh, no mind, no spirit, musoke, no thinking. Huh? And then you have many things. For example, in the Golin no show of Miyamoto Musashi, you have something called uh, Makura Osairu. What does it mean? If you translate literally, it means to control the pillow. Control the pillow. <laughs> did he smoke a little? Oh, no, there is no smoke back in the days. Maybe, did he drink too much? Musashi was known to not be a drinker, always uh, control himself. So what does it mean? If you translate like it is, control the pillow, what does it mean? What does it mean? I'm asking you. You have to okay. translate. Huh? In Spanish, I say, control the pillow. Well, control the pillow is what? Is what support the head. All right? Yeah, right. What support the head. See. So technically speaking, the meaning of this is you need to control what come before the head is doing. So you need to control the intention before the intention goes out. That's what we call, for example, mihatsu, mihatsuki osei suru. That's what you have, for example, in Toga Kore Ryudensho. Control the key, attack the key, the intention before it happened. So this idea that you have in the, um, the text written by Takamatsu Sensei called uh, Ninjutsu Hiketsu, Hiketsubun, uh, uh, where you need to prevent everything and to take the, the intention before it completely uh, developed, before it completely finished. This aspect of Sen no Sen, for example, the intention before the intention. 
Hein. Then there is also this aspect of kisen um, or kisaki. Kisaki o saeru or Kisaki o seisuru in Takagi Yoshinryu, for example, and many other schools like uh, Shinkageryu, to control the first intention. The, the, in French, the word would be the, les prémices de l'intention. So it's just at the moment it's going to start. It's not completely sin. Hmm. For that, you really need to, again, listen. And in order to listen, what you need to have to be open. Because if you listen because you're interest, it's not being open. You still have an interest. It's not completely pure. So there is no transmission. Mm. And you're not enough discipline for that. <laughs> you just didn't. Is it okay? All right. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. Um... So how I know that I become a student to Ishizuka Sensei? Well, but look, you ask him. Every people who have met with me in Japan with him, first. The way we interact, the way we talk. Uh, for example, I've been in his mother, uh, uh, God bless his soul, father, um, uh, funeral. I was there. I was there in Ida San's mother funeral. I've been there. I know their father and their mother. I talk with them, I've been with them, I know Ishizuka Sensei, all his belongings and family and siblings, all. You said my name over there and you understand. Now you said the name of whatever pretend to be a student of Ishizuka Sensei. That's what the phrase is going to be. Who is it? Huh? Who the fuck he is? Huh? You remember that? <laughs> oh, I think it's the guy, that shit guy who just came once or twice and run his mouth too much. <sighs> So uh, I've li I live in Ishizuka Sensei's house. Now, I'm not saying I'm a student. This is maybe just the things, just the sign of the outside relationship. Now, after, up to you to go to see him and ask him about me, and then you will see, to ask his wife, to ask Aida-san, to ask Ogawa-san, and even to ask Ishi Hatsumi Sensei, why not? And look, if you can, see the expression of the face. Don't forget, there is a saying in history that they said that the Japanese is the civilization of the mask. No men, no bunka in Japan. So there are people who doesn't show their emotion, which is pretty much case of uh, all Asia, Asiatic people, but the Japanese are very strong for that. So anyway, they can lie. Oh, I'm the best liar. <laughs> Now, you ask Oscar, who live in Japan, saw me over there. Graham, Dale, Ferry, Brandon, Joshua, Stefan, and many, many other there. I can, Renan, Ramon, David Guzman, and still many other who saw me over there. And there is many other, and there is who saw me and didn't fucking care. And still believe there is nothing, so it's fine, you know. You go, you tell. You see the way I move, and if in the way I move there is something that's similar to him, If there is no means, I need to practice more. Or if there is, but you don't want to see, well, I don't question my abilities. I question your capacity to be able to see and recognize. <laughs> there is a old saying. I love it very much. All of us all around the world, whatever the country you are, all right? Okay? We can recognize that the roses smells good. Yes or no? Yes. Rose have a smell, all right? Now, the one who said the, ro the rose doesn't smell, should question. Yeah. If you had COVID. <laughs> the roses. You know what, in the Bujinka, that's what we have. People with no eyes, no noise, with nothing. Just flying, just slave. Slave of their own emotion. Slave of their own, I want to be, I want to be, I want to be there. I have the things, I'm in the Kuka or whatever. So, student of Ishizuka Sensei, when you become a disciple of a master like him, and I'm talking about Ishizuka Sensei, so I'm not talking yet about Hatsumi Sensei, because Hatsumi is okay, that's son style. When you become a disciple of a master, a good man, a gentleman, an incredible uh, man like him, who shine from his heart, because of his heart, when you become a student like this, you 
teach by exemplary. You need to be the exemplar that shine the same way. You need to be the mirror that reflect the same shine. You cannot be, you cannot say you're a student of someone who is good, who is nice to people, very nice, always open, and you are just a motherfucker. Take the money, pretend that you are this and you're not, that you're using the image of the master to sell yourself, etc., etc. I'm sorry for the word. Sometimes, you know, you need to be completely straight. It's my, it's my heart, you know, whatever you said. Um, Motherfucker, oh, your mother is a prostitute or son of a prostitute. It's the same things. <laughs> Goes direct to the point. Some people need to understand. Motherfucker, some people understand. Prostitute. Up to you. So here it is. Mm. And I know one thing about Shizuka Sensei, and I know pretty well this dojo, I guess. I hope for the time I've spent, because I built it also, and many, many other things. I know if he has students or not. Even one day, um, Hatsumi Sensei, uh, I have phrased from him many things, and he said, uh, kote wa wa I don't have a top student. Tada, no naka ni chiban shugyo shita no wa shizuka da. Te chan da. Uh, but uh, in the, among the people I had, the only one who really practiced well and correct is only Te chan. The Chinese who is a Shizuka. Hmm. And I've been witness of many things like that. And I'm not someone who lies about that. Hmm. There is no reason anyway. There is no reason because when you look the way he moves, Shizuka Sensei, it's like class. <laughs> it's a mix of between, I said many times, it's a mix between Denzel Washington in every great movie he did. From Malcolm X when he told, from Day, uh, from a, a training day when you look at you with a cigarette like this I don't know <laughs> huh? He's, and when he moved the other it doesn't have that it doesn't have that density and this is something in the heart something you have in the heart that the other doesn't have and that come back to uh, what uh, Tora Sensei said to Takama Sensei about Goku. Uh, Goku is the Shisho uh, Goku is the Nande Gozai Maska. Goku is the Kokoro ni Aru Monda. What is the Goku? What is that highest ultimate technique? He said, Oh, it's just what you have in your heart, or it's just about your heart. Yeah. It's at the end of the day, whatever the style, whatever the discipline, whatever the relationship, it's all about the heart. And by heart, I don't mean the emotion. And by heart, I don't mean the, all those crazy things that can turn us because of uh, love, betray, etc. Et Something that goes beyond that. And that's not easy. That's what we call this shinobu, shinobi no michi. Huh? It's all about patience and perseverance. Not just to wait in order to have what you want and your paycheck and your technique and your rank. Everyone is very easy to patience in that case. I'm not talking about that. And in yeah. that case, you can understand the word bufuiko. Yes. Because bufuiko is all about this. It's the constancy for everything that is with martial art in that world we live, in the time you live. Yeah. In that case, you understand and respect the time. All right. And the time goes also with space. You cannot understand space without the meaning of the time because time has a meaning. And that's how it goes. And in that case, you understand the meaning of ma. Ma ai shiru ma. Uh, every, uh, the things that people translate, uh, unfortunately and limitedly, uh, by uh, distance. Hmm. So, is it okay to understand? To I mean, for the answer about uh, how do you think yeah, she's a cousin student? I don't feel myself as a cousin student right now, but I'm happy to be. Uh, let's say the, under him. It's cool. Okay, so sorry for the pre presentation before no, because I said <laughs> so good. You know, people present the way they want. Then after that, I'm here to fix it. Yeah, <laughs> that's why the doctor. <laughs> I always, always look at myself as a fixer, a pusher, your brother, your sellers, your dealer. I'm everything for you. <laughs> Such a 
Yeah, and and also we came to the beginning now with the uh, COVID situation and the introspection. You know, the again you have to look inside of you, uh, the heart, uh, and, uh, and whatever that, that's been, and um, you know, uh, see yourself, your true self. Hmm. So uh, I'm gonna do another question. Um, what are the important aspects uh, of the practice on martial art, on classical martial arts? In general? In general. Uh, constancy, endurance, and f following the master rightly, correctly, uh, in order to find humbleness. Mm. Um, by uh, constancy and correctly, we mean also precisely. We need to be the answer to any kind of situation, to become the answer to any kind of uh, situation or the solution to any kind of problem. And if you don't know it, well, work to find it. So that's the things about classical martial arts. Then, of course, I can use the word surviving, uh, seeing the danger before it happens, study. But this is this is already going too much into the thematic of uh, uh, what an art is. Of course, everything that deals with classical martial arts is born on the battlefield. So you have uh, some um, common uh, process of how to use the body uh, according the armor and all the um, disadvantage and advantage that the armor brings to you and how you're going to keep this on your body in order to create what we can call uh, the uh, archetype of Bujutsu body that will allow you to face any style, use any kind of weapon, and to be ready to adapt yourself. Because every classical martial art uh, proceeds from the same idea. Now it's who's going to be able to reach that idea and to uh, materialize it in reality according to the time you live and being able to make the bridge between the past and the present and the future. Did I answer enough correctly, Javier? Because I look at you like completely stoned or you lost something. No, 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 are I you, don't. Are you lost in translation? No, no, I hope not. <laughs> I'm joking because you're here like thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, because I'm, <laughs> I'm a heavy thinker. I'm a heavy thinker. I'm kind of neurotic, you know? <laughs> All right, all right. But um, and in particular in Bujinkan. <gasps> oh man! No, I, look, I mean I don't look at Bujinkan as a martial art. I don't look Bujinkan as a classical martial art. Bujinkan is the name of an organization. Yeah. But first of all, you need to understand where it comes from, the name and the reason why the name. First, the name of Bujin was um, a word used by Hatsumi Sensei as an homage to Takamatsu Sensei at the very early beginning. And that was between Hatsumi Sensei and the four, five, six primary students who were practicing with him at that time. Knowing that Hatsumi Sensei was very, very strict back in those days, didn't accept any student. Most of the time, he also uh, uh, refused some of them for a couple of times. Uh, the late uh, Ogure Shihan was not accepted right away. Hatsumi Sensei didn't want him. And then maybe he becomes soft or gentle. He let him in. So that tells a lot about the man. Uh, at the same time, he was not a teacher. He was just using people uh, for his own practice. It was not, I mean, the, the door was not open for him to become a master. Maybe in instruct. And the people who were clever at least could took it. People who were good to copy were took it. That's the reason why everyone have a different form. Mm. Because classical martial arts is not school. The way you teach. That's one of the first things. So Bujinkan cannot be seen like that. Bujinkan is maybe more right now like a big pub with many drinks. Sometimes with, uh, and everyone come drinks and congratulate each other and stab in the back sometimes saying I'm better, my beer is better than yours or whatever. And that's it. That's how I see the Bujinkan myself. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is at the top level. Uh, at the base, you have a lot of uh, very uh, innocent um People who want to learn martial arts, who are attracted maybe by wrong idea about ninja, but they want to, they want to go through. They, go, they want to learn. They want to uh, uh, see something um, authentic, correct, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, they start to 
get completely mislaid, sometimes corrupt by the so-called idea here and there. And then what happened between a student and a teacher is what happened like everywhere. You know, you, you sign, you love, you, you bend your knees. Uh, you accept the game until the day you, you wake up. And if you wake up and you won't still believe that what you do is good, it's your, until the day gets smack in the head. Mm. So, uh, no, I don't I don't consider the Bujinkan. Uh, I consider Bujinkan what it is. Bujinkan. Uh, uh, the uh, manor of the Bujin. That's it. So the name of an organization. It became a style when you look what people are doing. Some people is going to say, this is what Hatsumi Sensei is doing. But I've been in Japan and I saw Hatsumi Sensei. The day we can do like him at his age, then we can talk. Never happened. Mm-hmm. Never. Now the nine school, nine of you are? Yes. yes. The <laughs> nine of you have all the parameters of uh, uh, what we call, what we have from Muromachi Jidai to Edo and even the free... Uh, a free part, free period of Edo aspect of classical martial art from the mind, from the use of the body, ex- everything is in. It's all the idea of ninjutsu anyway. So uh, that's that's yes? that's one of the questions, you know, you have uh, the Koryu, the nine Yuruha, uh, the ninjutsu, well, okay, we say Wujinkan not, you not, not consider the martial art itself, so How we order all that chaos, you know, Koryu, Ninjutsu, the nine schools are different, are the same. Uh... Uh, first of all, you have to understand the history between this and also different. When you said Koryu in Japanese, uh, uh, Furui Nagare or Inishie Nagare, that's a, the, the, the reading, means old current. I use the word classical current. current. All right. Now, In the classical current, you have the primary ryuha and then different kind of ryuha that's going to born for many reasons. You cannot say ninjutsu is a koryu. That's completely stupid. Okay. In Japanese, it's completely stupid. It's like saying kenjutsu is a koryu or jujutsu is a koryu. Ninjutsu is a generic word. Like uh, judo is, like jujutsu is, like uh, karate is, etc. What you need to understand is the historicity behind the word and how it works. Ninjutsu, literally, jutsu, wo an, technique, way of using the body, using the mind, using technicity, etc. Of nin, shinobu, to hide, to infiltrate, uh, exfiltrate, to hide your pain, uh, to always hide anything, to be patient, etc., etc. So the kanji nin you have in every classical martial art, because it's all about patience, endurance, uh, and constancy, and perseverance as well. So ninjutsu, it's a way of thinking, a way of living, a way of seeing life and a way of acting. Then on that, people with that state of mind is going to create technique. And this is what you have in many ryuha. Togakure ryu is one, gyoko ryu is one, koto ryu is one, etc., etc. But you can even say that people who used to practice the founder the founder of Tenshin Shoden Katori Shinto ryu, Isasa Choisai, or the founder of Kage ryu, Um, I see because I all the founder of Nen Liu, etc., etc., because they were warriors who raised themselves among the mass of warriors, they were ninja too, because they were the one who can endurance, endure, persevere, and be patient more than the other. Because at the end of the day, it's to not show how your movement works, how it starts, not setting any intention, not being able to be read by someone. That's the idea that you have in ninjutsu. That's it. Without, of course, uh, adding the fact of spying, infiltration, exfiltration, etc., etc. But that goes without saying. It's part of the art, surviving. Right. So there is this difference. You need Koryu is Koryu. It's the style, the technique, etc. The mind that will lead, the heart, the essence that will lead those techniques is what the founder was can be Shinto, can be Mikyo, can be Buddhism Zen, all right? or it can be Ninjutsu, or it can be all of them together. In Japanese, they love syncretism, so it's fine. So uh, another thing related, uh, we always hear that uh, Buchinkan, it's, <laughs> it has the nine Ruha, but uh, six are them on Samurai, and three of them are Ninja Schools. 
you know, I don't know what they smoke, I don't know what they took, but this first, as a scholar, as a scholar, if someone come to ask me this, I said, please take the door. I don't want to talk with you. <laughs> nah. Over there. Nah. <clears throat> Finish. Zero. Nah, nah. That's what I'm going to say to him. Go study a little bit. Go study a little bit. What, what does it mean, samurai school? Well, samurais who wear backpacks and <laughs> go to the school, to the school bus. <laughs> Sorry, Why not? My name is Yotaro. I go to school practice. Oh, it doesn't go like that. Man. When you said samurai school, it means nothing. Even in Japanese, bushi no ryuha, a translation, an old current of a warrior. There is different kind of bushi samurai. There is different kind. Some who does, didn't like to use weapon, but they are born in a uh, in a warrior family. Some who are very good in poetry and etc. They were this word, but they never were able to use it. Some use it because they had to do it, but that was not really the game. So when you said a samurai or you, this is something you might have in Edo and still it doesn't have any meaning because a warrior, no matter what, he wants to survive and show that his technique is works no matter what. So if he can face a ninja, which is a samurai, by the way, only a warrior can kill a warrior. I don't like that kind of story, but ninja was what? Historically speaking, is a bushi who lost the war. And then with that experience of failure, of losing his life, try to overcome that by creating another way of looking everything that makes him losing in the first hand and try to not duplicate the same story or the same experience, which is pretty much what humankind is. We learn by experience. There is a saying uh, that Toda Sensei uh, wrote, and he said, uh, you, you might learn wisdom by three way. First one, by imitation. Second one, by reflection. And the last one, by wisdom, by experience. Actually, you need the three. The three are in. You don't, oh, I don't want to do, to, I don't want to do the same mistakes as my father. I don't want to do the same mistake as my teacher. You know, we have sometimes that arrogance. You're going to do mistakes. You're going to do your mistakes. But if you do your mistakes based on their knowledge, it will maybe attenuate your mistakes. It's now how you're going to wake up from that. How are you going to stand up? How are you going to come back? I like the idea of falling forward in that case. So uh, people who are saying uh, there is uh, that number of samurai, okay, let me give you uh, an example of that. I'm doing, in Hatsumi Sensei's home, a translation. I, was, I mean, it happened, I'm not the only one, many did this. See, and uh, I won't say the name of, uh, I just can say the guy is from Spain. That's it. Not from Katarina, from Spain. And he has a question to Hatsumi Sensei, uh without her of course uh, say thank you because if, if i say the mistakes it's on me it's not what Hatsumi mm -hmm. Sensei said that's the the good things because if you don't translate what they want to hear you're wrong not Hatsumi Sensei and if you translate right you're still wrong because it doesn't um how can i say uh, goes in the way they want look our translation are crazy. But anyway, so he asked to Hatsumi Sensei, uh, Sensei, is it true that uh, in the uh, Bujinkan there is a, a free ryu of ninjutsu and uh, six of uh, uh, samurai? So I translate to Sensei. I say, oh, yeah, so this name. Mm -hmm. All right, good. Everything is good. I translate. I shut the fuck up, you know. Me, I was on my head. This, it's... it's... Another one comes and ask the opposite is it true you have six ryu of ninjutsu and three ryu of the bujutsu sa samurai samurai that's very very easy in french we have you know the sauce samurai you think uh, they made it in japan la sauce samurai now it's something some arabic did here by mixing ketchup harissa and things and because it's really <laughs> hot call this the sauce samurai anyway let's come back to that so he has the question is it true, Sensei, that we have a six school uh, uh, of ninjutsu and a free school uh, of uh, samurai? And Hatsumi Sensei, mm, so, mm, 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 mm. so I translate, yes, 
You're right. He <laughs> said, there is. So then the guy left. And I'm here. And I said, mm, 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 no. Like this, no? Please, I said, No, no, no. What's wrong? She said, one guy just came and he said, is it true that there is fear you heard in Jaya and Sin Zemwa? He said, yes. And the other guy said, said the opposite. And he said the same thing. So, huh? Huh? Or not? You understand? Do they move here? You understand? That's it. Do they move Translation, if I had to translate, who the, who cares? That would be the idea. Whatever it is. What does it mean? He could say the truth. Or he yeah. could say what he knows. But he understand that those people wanted to hear this. They start by the question, like, is it true? It's not even a question. It's in a, a, an affirmation through a question. Right. And then, of course, they are the same guy who came back. Oh, by the way, I heard Hatsumi Sensei told me, you know, he told me to me. Uh, we forget Hatsumi Sensei. It's, you are the, the messenger. Now, the idea is completely, completely, completely the opposite. First of all, we need to understand historically who is the main, the main master that Hatsumi Sensei follow. His name is Takamatsu. Takamatsu. We good, we good on that? All right. How many masters Takama Sensei had? Three. Toda, his grandfather, Ishitani, and Mizuta Sensei. Mizuta is Takagi Yoshinryu, we clear. If we take Takagi Yoshinryu history prior Takamatsu, and listen to me carefully, ladies and gentlemen, if we take the history of Takagi Yoshinyu, Hontai Takagi Yoshinyu, whatever, I have the full name, huh? Hontai Takagi Yoshinyu Jutai Jutsu. All right. Prior Takamatsu, which means to Mizuta and the people who learn from Mizuta. If we look that Ryuha, historically speaking, and you look where it comes from, it goes, it stretched back directly to one of the primary Ryuha of Japan known as Takeno Uchiryu Kogusoku or Koshino Mawari. That's the primary Ryuha of Jujutsu, if you want. And they use light armor, and they had in their nucleus technique, many weapons based on the way you use the body. Is it an ninjutsu? It's, it's completely stupid. I said a Ryuha cannot be a ninjutsu. Ninjutsu is about survive. It's about endurance, about find your way to always stay alive, protect your family, etc., uh, etc. Et of course, spying, killing, assassination with some chocolate, no problem. We're good, we understand each other, all right? But the founder of Takeno Uchiryu, Takeno Uchi Hisamori, had to fight, had to survive, had to find the keys, had to find secret way and use the weapon in a certain way, a way of tie up enemy, etc., etc. So in that case, the movement we have in Takagi are the same. We start by Seiza no Kamei, when you look the first technique, the way sitting, pretty much the same. Okay? Mm -hmm. So here we clear, we are in the front of what is known as a Sogo Bujutsu. What is a Sogo Bujutsu? It's called Bujutsu Composite. It's a, a Ryuha, like every Ryuha are, they are composite, from one movement, pshum, they use, they are completely expendable. Okay? We're mm. good, we're clear. So it's a bujutsu. Now, that bujutsu fell into the hand of someone who have been already shaped by two master ninja. Completely. To hide, to protect, to sense, to not show the form, to never tell what you have, to not pretend, to check, to look. Takama Sensei was completely already brainwashed and virus by Toda. So when he went to Takagi Yoshinyu, he could catch up everything. When he went to Takagi Yoshinyu, he was already, already Menkyo Kaiden of Shinden Fudoryu and Kotoyu. So, uh, hey, it's impossible. Plus, 
he learned another kind of Takagi Oshinryu from Ishitani Sensei, who show him that, look, they do this, that's what you should do. Mm. My question is, before Takamatsu Sensei, is it interesting? Yes, yes. in a historical point of view. Yes, in uh, many things. Now, what we practice come from Hatsumi Sensei and Takamatsu. What people is going to call the Takamatsu then, whatever then. I would love to do this. And most of the people who talk like this, they move like shit. Yes, I say it. And if they have a problem, they came to see me each time on the seminar. No one came anytime. They move mm. like shit. I'm sorry. You just, just go in front of a boxer or MMA guy, you will see. Mm. So, Takamatsu Sensei, everything came in him and the guy was already brainwashed as a ninja by his grandfather, technically, the way of striking. When you look, for example, all the atemi we do in Takagi Yoshimi, that Hatsumi Sensei received from Takamatsu, they are completely different than the atemi they do in the other branch of Takagi Yoshimi that still exists. And you have another branch of students who have learned from students of Takamatsu Sensei in Kukushin Ryu, and the way they move, of course, same name of technique, same, but the way of moving, it's different. Steve, Samurai Ryu, that's how they call so I don't understand the meaning me between Samurai Ryu and Ninja Ryu. That means nothing. Hmm. Nothing. Because back in the days, when they arrived on the battlefield, they didn't arrive, you know, with, here come the Ninja Clan. Here come the Ninja Clan. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on. There, no one knew. And when you know it, it's already too late. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, thank you very much for... This is again stupid. This is people, we Westerners, we want to put etiquette. Right. And this is also what happened in Japan too, what we call the compartmentalization of the style. People want to say, this is Kenjutsu, this is this, this is, and by doing this, you kill the body. It's like you, it's like, for example, the hand can do this, the leg can do this, but this without the heart, without the brain, without everything, it's useless. So it's the same. Right, right. Right. Thank you. I hope clear enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course, we can go deep. We can go on each school and explain why, etc. etc. But this is what people want in order after to shine in the front of the students say, I have information. Problem is, you have information, but you don't know where you get them and you don't know how to use them and you don't know how to materialize them in a reality. Right. I like to say that the word information is based, it's cut into infra, inside, and formation to formate who you are deep down inside in order to face and understand what's coming in. Mm. Because if what's coming in is shit and you don't have the right filter, I, 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 <laughs> see the shit inside already? <laughs> right. Well, yeah. talking about compartmentation, well, we want, we not gonna to extend much more the this first part in order to people who have questions who already sent it and the live chat have time for it so we're gonna do a, a little break of two minutes just to get in order the question just a minute all right just a minute uh, and... i'm joking javier i'm playing with you <laughs> no problem at all <laughs> Thank you very much for your patience. So we're going to start from the Q&A uh, section. So we're going to do our best to cover all the questions. Maybe we don't, we don't accomplish. We're going to say sorry for upfront and maybe we, we can have another occasion for the, for this question. Right. So, um, first question, um, I'm going to say first, uh, this, uh, from Ramon Perez Sierra from Spain, we name it, um, during the elaboration of your doctoral thesis, what were the main difficulties? Was the fact of being a foreign child a difficulty for gathering and accessing to information, or it was the opposite by obtaining assistance for being a foreign child? Uh, no, the first, of, first of all, you know, it's not being foreigner, because uh, when you reach already the level of PhD, 
uh, you need to know how to read, write in Japanese pretty well and explain things in Japanese pretty well. You need also to be able to find the text, to find the source, to find everything, to, to be able to uh, go in a library by yourself, uh, deals with a lot of information, etc. So honestly, it's not the idea of being a foreigner right here. Mm. You, you're, not, you're not anymore of you may be a foreigner because of your color of the face, of who you are, your identity, etc. But you're not foreigner to the language. All the, so for this, I didn't feel foreigner at all. What was the most difficult is to be accepted first in the university, not in Japan, in France. <laughs> Something on classical martial arts. Because already in France it doesn't work, you can be sure that other country doesn't work. Now I'm saying that everything is like in France. Don't get me wrong here. I don't want to have that kind of a, a, a mind who think uh, like egocentric, not at all. What I try to explain is that in general, in in um, uh, academic, doing things on martial arts is not well seen. And it's logical when you look all the clown, all the stupidity, all the, my master said that he come from God, he saw a Tengu and he did this and then he fly. Well, I... Uh, you talk like this in the front of people who've been 10 years in Japan. Some of them have maybe practiced Judo, Karate, Kendo, Aikido. Some of them knows very well Japanese. They understand that you're not serious. So first of all, the first thing is to be um, recognized and that your study, your uh, methodology is recognized as something valid, authentic, serious and academic. That's the first point. Already I had the master and what we call the, in French, the first year of a PhD called DEA, DEA, it's completely different from the DEA in America, don't get me wrong. Uh, DEA, which means Diplôme d'études approfondies, so it's a deepest uh, study diploma. It's the first year of PhD where I uh, study uh, medical things in order to explain how the movement works in classical martial arts for one year doing uh, medical stuff, etc., etc. So already the uh, paper was accepted and then I received a special grant known as Lavoisier from the uh, French foreign uh, minister and the, the people who judge my work, they said, this is good, this is great, we send you in Japan. So that was the, the first step. Then you arrive in Japan. Ah, that's another thing. The teacher look at you like a foreigner and when you see that you can read Japanese, that you can open the scroll and you know things, at that moment, they recognize directly. So step by step, the door opened by themselves. They opened by your, uh, by your uh, again, your um, endurance, perseverance, your capacity, the way you are with the teacher, the way you are with the text, your capacity to understand and interpret it, the text, to find things from different perspectives that maybe the Japanese have forget or forgot. That's the main things. For me, uh, you know, when you love, you don't see the difficulty the same way. It is difficult, of course, don't get me wrong, but you take this more like a kind of a, a, a very good test for your own capacity. So that's the, the main difficulties when you want to do something like that. Now, of, co of course, after you can, I fell on strange teacher, strange professor. Uh, most of the time, the people I've met in the academic were always good, always nice, very positive, and they really like what I did because um, according them, no one was doing old stuff. Most of them, they were more focused in modern things like judo, karate, etc. etc. When it deals with old things, you need to go, uh, and especially without a uh, budo background, like a modern martial art background. It's you do classical martial art, you deal with martial art, but at the same time, you keep a certain neutral, a neutral ground. And that's very, very important. For example, when we talk about the Bujinkan, but any style, we don't keep that neutrality. If you're not neutral enough, you won't be able to answer correctly and see the reality and stay based, strictly based on the fact, really on the fact. Because if you don't do this, uh, unfortunately, you're not. Right. You good? I hope I answer well. We, we should ask Ramon, but I guess. Yes, question, Ramon. I hope you will. <laughs> um, well, I have a question. Yep. Go ahead, Santi, please. Uh, well, it's the, the advice question that I made, made you the, the last time. So, uh, 
Do you have an advice for something like that uh, for someone who is starting in pushing camp and someone who is uh, not getting better training? Someone who just started. Someone who just started and someone who is uh, not getting better. All right. Well, first, for the one who start, my well, first good luck. That's the best advice I can give. Uh, because uh, Bujinka, it's very interesting in many ways for the technique, but it's also a jungle. <laughs> and in each jungle, you really need to be lucky and to prepare yourself to have the right backpack with everything in. I mean here when, for example, you just start, it is important to observe pretty much how the teacher is, the way it is with the students how and the people around. Not only the student, the people with who we talk, how he is, if he's a seller, if he's a promoter, if he hurts student, or if he's just about himself, or if he just played the samurai, uh, he played the Japanese. You should not talk to me. You don't have the time. You don't have the, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. At the same time, he needs to um, see a lot of information, to gather a lot of information using YouTube, everything, check every teacher, master, book, everything to make his own homework. This is the primary aspect of classical martial arts, Hakari Goto, searching, searching the ground, know about the style you want to learn, know about the people. That's the first thing. And then after, of course, there is the experience. He's going to have to uh, experiment the betray, the failure, and etc., etc. And from that, let's hope he met a good teacher, a good master, a good instructor, or at least a good friend. Mm. And if he quit, well, he didn't quit. The art didn't want him. That's why. That's how I translate things. You don't quit. You don't deserve that art. It's about endurance, patience, perseverance. How you quit? How you quit? You quit, huh? Your father, you quit. Your mother, you quit. Oh, you get, of course, angry, tired. You. You scream, yes, but you come back or you fail forward, mm. right? So that's the things. Now for the one who doesn't get better, question the way you practice. Huh? Question the way you practice, open your eyes. If you don't get better, it's because something doesn't work around. And if you don't get better, don't looking for being better. Work, keep on practice, don't looking for the result. Being able to practice, to come every day, to be in health, this is already the gift of life. You have to learn to consider and reconsider what you never considered before. And that takes time, it takes also reflection, it takes also a lot of uh, reflection is based on what you see, what you observe and what you experiment deep down inside, in a family, in life, in job. It's not just the dojo, it's not just the student. If you just do this, you limit and you compartmentalize your own way of practicing and your own vision. And then you become like this, stiff. Mm. And this, is really, this, to my point of view, is sad. It's even a blaspheme toward the art. But unfortunately, it's what it is. You can find this in any style. In both ways, good luck anyway. <laughs> okay. Another question from Antonia Christodolu. I hope I said oh, yeah. right. Yeah. Cyprus. Yes, um, she said, by assuming that men are logical thinkers and women are more complex, emotionally attached beings, are there, are there difference how they express themselves using ninjutsu movements? Yes, of course. Of course. I mean, what she said is very true in psychological way. But at the same time, when you know that most of the technique of classical martial arts were created for people who were weak. Not saying that the women are weak, but people who could not uh, face strong, um, strong things. At the same time, if you look in general, for example, when you go to school, people who are pretty much strong physically, but never practice martial arts because they are strong and no one attacked them. So they feel most of the time safe. And when sometimes they were attacked by someone small, they fell down. So it's all about courage. So you can see this kind of a very interesting uh, contradiction. Um, very important to keep in mind. Now to answer more to your question, yes, of course. Um, like I said, every technique are created for um, efficiency of movement, of uh, um, economy of movement, 
economy of energy. This is everything that, for example, a woman can express very easily if and only if she have the right way to practice and the right teacher, woman or male or men, who teach her. Most of the time, the problem is when women get into the martial arts, and especially a men's martial art, they are pushed to move like men. Mm. Whatever, it's karate, judo, etc. And that's very strange because you ask a woman to fight a man with men's rules. It never works. Now, ask a woman to fight a man with woman rules, she wins. And there is no one man on this earth who will tell you the opposite. First of all, we should never forget that we all come from a woman. So automatically, uh, that's something uh, in, of course, you have some crazy guy and don't get me wrong. You have some people who beat women, some stupid people who raise the hand on women, etc., etc. And I'm not saying women deserve it. Don't get me wrong on that. But the control here is very important. When you know that physically speaking, you're completely different. So she's going to use weapon that you, you can't face. So technically speaking, yes, there is a way and there is a way to express them. And actually, for example, beauty artistic, the way of moving, the way of using the legs, the flexibility, everything that is with subtlety and classical martial art, and especially in ninjutsu, it's only based on subtlety. So I hope I answer to you, Antonio. Sandy, one from the chat. Okay, we have here one that says, what is the hardest part of having a kind heart every day? <laughs> can you can you again tell the question, please? Okay, sorry. <laughs> what is the hardest part of having a kind heart every day? And why can you not have a kind heart? I mean, there is things you like and the things like you dislike, like all of us. And sometimes there is things that piss you off more than other. And now uh, let's uh, just uh, w sit and think about uh, those ideas of why I dislike this and what are the reasons why I dislike this man or this woman. Uh, same, why I'm pissed off of this? Does it really worth it to spend time and life on this? Can we get all along? Can I cannot see maybe something positive on this that can teach me to be better? I think when uh, you try the kindest part of you, it allow you to open door you don't expect. I'm not saying it's not easy. I'm a human being myself too. I get pissed off. I have a lot of <laughs> problem and things like that. Uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, there is who you are deep down inside you. So uh, there is things that hurts. So the better it's to not listen to them. They call this uh, in Japanese, uh, zatsunen. you have to kill it. You have to cut it, your, um, your uh, attention. And I said to Sensei, oh, that's really quite difficult. And then Hatsumi Sensei arrived with another, that is me, or muto ni nare. And become muto, do muto. I say, yes, but life is not about muto. Mm. So then, uh, I think, you know, I should say the you and your life. Uh, uh, we deal about classical martial arts. When you teach, you need to be kind. You need to be kind very much. It's very important. You need to be kind very much. You need to be helpful and open. But at the same time, you cannot be stupidly kind. I hope you understand what I mean. Or pretend you kind because you want something kindness it's a, a very beautiful uh, window that open your heart and show who you are deeply down inside so for example look the kindest of a woman toward the child or a father uh, when they cry or when things like that try to be uh, concerned about the people because uh, if they get hurt you can understand that hurt and if it doesn't and if you cannot understand try at least to be open to it. So that's one way to practice this. In the practice, for example, effectiveness, if you're looking for to hurt only people, that's not kind. Now, if you try to help them, that's another way. Mm. I hope I answered to you. I know your question is a little bit strange. Mia. I deal with this story. <laughs> <laughs> I don't deal with uh, mind things like that. You know, I'm not a guru or anything like that. I mean, I'm sorry, I hope it helped a little bit. Just keep on practice, be cool, nice, respect your parents, 
and who knows mm. who knows any more questions please yes from oscar varosella um oscar um, let's go could you please explain a bit uh, the concept of henka inside a curio and he explained also uh, one of the translations that you did to Hatsubi Soke come to my mind, where he explained that he only did what Takamasu Sensei taught him and nothing more. His words and the real meaning of Henka can be connected. And thank you very much. All right, all right, all right. So I see what I was saying. Uh, yes, yes. I think it's in one of the quest series of uh, Gokui. Uh, yes, 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 yes. The Hikan, Hikan series. Well, um, well, first, the word henka in Japanese is constituted of two kanji, hen, kawaru, kaeru, that means change, and ka, uh, 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 that means transformation. The ka is also used for everything that used for like a bakemono, etc., like ghost. So there is in this aspect the thing of change and transform. So mm -hmm. something that change should be transformed. But by the word transform, you understand that it's something that goes through the form, deeper than the form. Most of the time in classical martial arts, the word we use is henke. Henke means like a, um, a, a change in the form, a change angle, or a change on the way of grabbing, a change in the way of striking. So that's uh, the kind of word you can find, first of all. And those things never happen because you think of doing it all right that's a very important thing to keep in mind most of the time the change happen at the moment you don't expect and that change is the result of the knowledge and the practice you had the relationship with the art the relationship with the master and all that legacy legacy mm. behind you according to kime which means the critical moment or the critical moment in the situation how you're going to react and adapt to that. And this is a blink of an eye and a fraction of a second. And that henka is the reflection of everything I just said. Art, relationship, etc. And when Hatsumi Sensei, and I remember clearly, he said, Boku wa ore wa, boku wa watashi wa, Takama Sensei ga yutta dori, oshatta dori, uh, so I did according what he showed me. I did and I say and I follow what he told me. When Azumi Sensei said this is the truth, because when you look the way he moved, when you look his knowledge, when you look his openness, when you look how he, he, he let everyone come, no matter what the level, no matter what, uh, <laughs> what we represent, a religious idea or not, he open to everyone and he's still moving great. He still have great move. He's still doing anything he want. So in that case, he's a true disciple of Takamatsu Sensei who follow what Takamatsu Sensei gave him, which is to never give up, to always move on, to always keep on practice, to always push deep and stay humble and accept everyone and never judge. In that case, yes. Now, if you look in the case of technique, technique, like I said, according people according the situation everything you learn is going to be test at that moment and if you did it well it's going to adapt because the situation is to adapt now if you think you're going to do whatever technique called swisha in cooking you or uh, your kuto in koto you or uh, um, santo tanko no gata in togakure you in the same way you you, you think wrong don't uh, do not um, misled or misunderstood the different aspect of the technique which sometimes you have aspect for teaching pedagogy showing demonstrating and killing or taking care of yourself and the moment of truth like karate kid if you want or when you're going to apply them it's very very important and also be aware of the state of mind behind following a master following a master means that automatically he recognizes as his peer for the future. So for sure, Hatsumi Sensei followed Takama Sensei at the later. What changed? Well, it doesn't live in the same area. He didn't have to face many foreigners like Hatsumi Sensei. He faced some in China. But when he came back to Japan, he was uh, in retirement. 
was cool, was very different. But at the same time, of course, he uh, ex he experiment betrayed, he experiment uh, stupidity, uh, foolishness, and had some reasons. They did a lot. Good <laughs> thing he didn't speak English. Doesn't mean he didn't understand people. <laughs> I hope I answer well about Henke, Henka, all right? And people who's just doing variation, variation, variation. I mean, uh, you need a certain constancy. Uh, creation needs to have a strong background, a strong backbone. Otherwise, creation means nothing. Right. Expression of yourself. Interesting. I prefer the expression of who you are deep down inside you. It's more than you. Mm. Your family, it's your background, is your ethnicity, is your culture, is your religion, is everything. And if everything I'm just mentioned is a positive value with the positive value of the master, it's two positive value that hurt each other. So, you know, plus 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 is only plus. Now, of course, maybe the master was listening, ding, 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 and you, you listen. <laughs> hey, at the end of the day, it's still music, as long as you have the rhythm and people like it. <laughs> right. Well, another question uh, from Esteban Diaz. Um, Esteban. Lately, lately, we can see more training spaces where there is a research of under pressure training sessions or testing the practice so far. Do you think that is convenient dedicate time in class to the randori or kumite and other related practices in order to test the martial arts skills? It depends on the styles. If we talk about the nine you are, uh, it's a little bit different. The aspect of randori and um, kumite doesn't exist in the nine you are. Why? Because all the techniques are made for killing. Uh, when you do a randori and kumite, automatically there is rules. So the techniques are changed for the rules of safety. So uh, when you look at judo, it's there is randori because techniques are limited. You cannot do anything. Same in karate, there is many things. When you do competition, you cannot strike in anywhere. And then, of course, there is the point according to second strike, for example, kick on the head, it's two point. If you strike with the punch, is one point. So it's better to attack with the kick because you have uh, more, more points. points. The time they are not good with the hand. So you, you, you have to understand this. It's always it depends on what you're looking for. If you want to look, you want to test yourself, there is many ways to test yourself better than the roundery, better than this. I'm not saying that the, uh, the roundery is not, is, is not good. No, no, no. Some people need it. Some people need sparring. Go ahead. If you like it, do it. I don't do myself, but if someone wants to try me, I'm open. It's all about the way you practice and the reason behind that. Now, in the dojo, when you practice, it depends. You have different kind of people, different kind of, let's say, society people, different kind of uh, looking. Some people want to do slow. Some people want to do fast. Some people want to, some people want to be effective. Some people uh, uh, are very weak. Some people just come for the friendship. So you need to be in the middle of that and compose and to do the best. Here again, best music, best dance <laughs> and for everyone. And rhythmic variations, no? So everyone can dance. Always, always, always. And you have to also to, vary, to regulate, to regulate the uh, um, the frequency, how to do, why? Because some want to copy you, but it doesn't have the capacity or the knowledge or the expense to copy. So you need to provide, you need to be a provider anyway. Hmm. I hope I answer well. Okay. Uh, Santi, another question from the chat. Hey, uh, Anthony from France. Uh, says, Hello, Kassem. Can you talk about Bumburyu? Uh, and uh, is it important to develop this in our practice? Can you repeat the name? It's Bun Bun or Bu Bu? Uh, Bun Bumburyu. Bumburyu. I never Bumburyu. heard of it. You want to say Bun Bun Yodo? Maybe. Uh, can, you, can you send me the. Yes. I, Does I he have Sanji? Yes, uh, I, I left that. He's writing. If you if you have the kanji and send it to me, because right now I don't understand. I need to see the kanji. Meanwhile, uh, I'm going to do another question. And... Please. Ah, ahí está. Okay, I will send it. Bumbun Yodo, I guess. Bumbun Yodo, yes. yes. 
All right, I see. So our boom boom, of course, must be. Our boom boom, you know, it's something that was already um, said during the Nara area. So we are very seventh century in Japan. What does it mean for the people who um, maybe didn't read the book or the next book and few things that's going to come in the future? Uh, boon boo. So it's boon is everything that is with uh, the self culture of yourself, everything that deals with the knowledge, the study of the book, etc., etc. So to cultivate your brain, your intelligence. And boo, of course, is military. It's all the art of fighting, etc., etc. So boom, boom, yodo, the path of literary intelligence cleverness and the path of military as a balance needs to be practiced equally mm -hmm. in other words in other words there is no better weapon with a great brain <laughs> if you consider the body as a weapon you will be the best weapon if you have a great brain and by great brain i mean a huge heart so what does it mean Study allows you to get into different culture, get into the knowledge of people, get into the head, how they think, why. And by learning and study, what do you know? What do you learn? You learn to forget a little bit yourself in order to understand the culture of everyone. So it teaches you humbleness and it teaches you the way of controlling and to know when to use the art only for the right reason. So yes, Anthony, you have to, you must, you should, and if you don't, it's not good. Right. Another question from uh, Mark Spada. Mark! It is, <laughs> it is true there is a relationship between Kukishin Ryu and Takagi Yoshin Ryu. If it's so, could you please elaborate it on the regards to our practice? Thank you very much. Of course, we can elaborate it, but it will take at least few hours so i'm gonna be very simple you have two theories based on uh two sides of the history takagi yoshin in takagi yoshin scroll they said that two one member one soke of takagi met one soke of cookie and they had like a kind of match which is strange because no one died so it was not really a match maybe an exchange of things add here The man from Kuki felt that Takagi Yoshinu have great movement of Jutai Jutsu. They were great in certain movement like, like the Sute Miwaza. So he decided to learn this from him. How they learn, we don't know. How long they stay together, we don't know. Maybe a week, maybe one day. Sometimes one day, one match is enough to understand that someone has great skills, especially in that time. And the guy from uh, Takagi Yoshinu felt that the Bojutsu from Kukishinu was one of the top. So he decided to take things like that and certain way of striking. So that's the beginning of how the connection, the so-called connection exists. And how we can see this in the genealogy of the people who practice Kukushin Ryu right now in Osaka, same for Takagi Yoshin Ryu, they're doing a certain way of doing Yawara, the Jutai Jutsu, based on the same technique of, of Takagi Yoshin Ryu. And in Takagi Yoshin Ryu, the Bojutsu they teach, signed by Ishitani, and for, uh, which is very interesting on the scroll, uh, claim to be Ishitani Sensei, they do the Bojutsu, like you have Goho no Kata, Ura Goho, Sashiai, like the first technique of Sabaki Gata, but the way they do it's completely different than us. Well, of course, it's the same A, B, C, D, but the way of using the body is completely different. So here, there is few questions. Even if that connection exists historically, something has been lost in transmission. For example, Ishitani Sensei, the one that Takama Sensei have met, who stayed in his, mother, in his father's uh, factory four years where he taught him everything before he died, died on his uh, knees, according to uh, Takamatsu Sensei's autobiography known as Meiji Moroku Otoko. This man, Ishitani Sensei, was before get into Takagi Yoshinu that he learned from his father. His father was also in everything that deals with ninjutsu from the Hattori family. So everything that deals with Koshijutsu, Kopojutsu, uh, Dakentai Jutsu. And his way of using the body and the way of using Takagi Yoshin was a little bit different because according to Takamatsu Sensei, who had already doing Takagi Yoshin with Mizuta Sensei, 
two years before when he met Ishitani Sensei, Ishitani Sensei said, you should not attack like that. You should not do like this. Uh-uh, we forget that. We forget this. We forget that. We forget. So it means that the Takagi Yoshinryu had in the Ryuha itself, different Shihanke, different master receive things deeper than the other. Ishitani Sensei was one of them. Why? Because he was not only good in Takagi Yoshinryu. He was also Kukushinryu, but also aspect of Gikon Ryu, another Ryuha called Hakun Ryu, and a man who knew a lot of things in you, Shinkage Ryu, Kage Ryu, and many, many other things. So we call this, according to Takamatsu Sensei, a master of everything. And he gave that all knowledge to Ish Takamatsu Sensei, who could see clearly the difference between that aspect of Takagi Yoshinyu, that aspect of Kukushinyu, very clearly. The proof is when you look, for example, because a lot of people sometimes who look in the Bujinkan and then they want to go to see student of Ueno Takashi, Kaminaga, uh, other student of uh, who learned from uh, Iwanami Nangaku, etc., etc. People who have met uh, Takamatsu Sensei or said they met uh, Iwanami Nangaku for sure. Ueno Takashi, it depends, there is no real proof, but at least there is an exchange of information. Anyway, some students want to go to see over there thinking that what they do it's more pure because more Japanese, which means more stiff and e -e 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 -e, more like that. Well, when you look the way they move, a lot of things are lost. Even the way of striking, for example, when you look in Takagi Oshinyu, the other branch, the way they strike, they strike like in karate, which never exists in classical Kuryu. So here it is. If the Takagi Oshinyu have kept the so-called way of striking of Kukushinryu, which is a Daken Taijutsu based on Koshijutsu and Kopojutsu, it should be the same as us. We don't strike like in Karate. We don't strike like this because we never hold a weapon like that. The strike like this that we call Tateken, it's because you lose, you have a weapon. So that's something very interesting. Of course, we could elaborate more, go deeper into the name, take each technique, etc. But I think we don't have time right now. I hope uh, it's enough for you. Thank right. you for the question, Mark, anyway. Yeah. Hope you will. Well, uh, another we... question, another one. Another one? Okay, uh, from uh, Ran, uh, sorry, I don't read. Randy Munio. Randy, Randy Munio, yeah. The one that's in the, it's in the chat. In the chat. All right, I'm going to read it. I'm going to okay. read it. All right, Mr. Kesem, you have always talked about transmission of knowledge in classical martial art. Not always, not only. Hmm. Uh, the importance of being face-to-face uh, -face with the teacher yes which means direct transmission second and I agree completely thank you since that way the complete the transmission can be received true Kuden Taiden Shinden thank you very much to read my article but currently the world is changing oh it was changing already back in the days i didn't wait COVID to see the world changing my friend but anyway uh after this pandemic after we're still in <laughs> well, well, method are changing not really we're still drinking water the way and we're still talking we still kiss the same way we still love the same way we're still watching netflix for the people who have netflix anyway <laughs> Traditional methods are changing, not to my point of view. Uh, now there are online classes at university. True, and it already exists before pandemic, and especially in university of um, medical, where there is too many students and they didn't have time. Also, another thing you forget, when you go in the university, the teacher doesn't have time to talk to one-on-one. -on -one. He does his class and goodbye. Then you have to do your own homework. So things didn't really change from that. Whatever is behind the screen or not, the same story is all about you. And Tupac said, it's all about you. <laughs> all right, now there are online classes, like you said, high school, elementary school, etc. So in this opinion, do you think that in the Ryuha, with this new era, not really new, the traditional method of transmission of knowledge will change in some way or will they not change or will new methods supported by technology development be added? So, I don't think so. Internet already exists. Online on class already exists. Before it was video that we sent, so that was online, but not really on internet. 
uh, technology exists nowadays since a couple of years. We have the phone that can, uh, you know, everyone is selfie, everyone's filming as so many times. Um, I, it will never, ever replace and take the place of a direct relationship. Of course, here like this, we have a certain directness because we are on time at the same time according each region and can we talk and you can answer now in case of martial art you need real touching you will wait the time it will happen you might go in japan you might see the teacher if you cannot see the teacher in japan you can see the teacher around where you live etc etc so how they did back in the days you know when there is a big la, la fievre espagnole or when they have the cholera how they did they wait and finished and they could not go to the church mosque or a synagogue. They stopped reading. No, they adapt. They adapt. Change, it's part of the art. Adaptation is the art. Listen carefully. Change is part of life and part of the art. And adaptation is the art. You cannot adapt. You cannot learn. You don't earn. You cannot learn. You don't earn. You cannot learn, you don't earn. Understand that? So if you are not finding, if you cannot find the best way to grasp that methodology, to make it happen, to make it happen, to go deep, then ninjutsu is not for you. Classical martial arts is not for you. Then of course, we don't need human, human being. Human being, there is this aspect of being, all right? And this aspect of being, it's because we interact. We need people. We need to sense. We need to suffer. We need to feel it. We need to, to grasp it, to, to taste it. And there is this saying, uh, because you don't do it, because you don't do it, because you've not been touched, you're not in, you can't understand it. So whatever you have everything on the, um, a screen, you are unconnected, or you have Wi-Fi, etc., it doesn't mean that this Wi-Fi, <laughs> this Wi-Fi doesn't work. All right? That's the first Wi-Fi you need to have. And then the other can be very interesting tools, but to not be attached to it, that's the most important, I guess. <laughs> I hope I answered to you well. I hope. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> so, um, I, I, we don't... There's still more time for you, Kasem. If it's okay, we do one more question. Or yeah, go ahead. You have you have some question here. Go yeah, ahead. there's there's a, a, few. a couple. Yep. Uh, how? Sorry. Uh, from Manzanita Feliz. Um, how how much importance do you give to having learned Japanese in your journey through martial arts and how it changes your practice? Thank you. Uh, ah, I tell number. Thank you, Carl's student of Victor Diaz from Barcelona. Yes. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, first of all, you know, if you if you if you if you heard me at the beginning of the talk, I said I study Japanese because I don't want to be fooled, and because I wanted to be able to communicate, but first to listen. Hmm. It's not because you study Japanese that you're better in classical martial arts, don't get me wrong. You have some people who speak Japanese and they're still moving like shit. And if you put them in the front, it's not because you speak Japanese that you know automatically to move correctly. And it's not because you know to read a scroll that you can do it. It's not because you can read that you understand. It helps, but at the same time, what you need to understand, and that's what me, I take it in this way. A lot of people sometimes they ask me, oh, Kasem, you know a lot of kanji, oh, Kasem, you study a lot, oh, Kasem, you speak well Japanese. I said, you should see this in the other hand. What do you mean? I said, I'm not lucky at all. You said, I'm lucky. I said, no, I'm not lucky. You don't see the responsibility behind that. Everyone is, uh, they think you're lucky because you can't read. No, there is a responsibility when you can't read. There is a responsibility when you start to understand. There is a responsibility when you can talk and make yourself or express yourself. There is a responsibility to not fucked up. <laughs> there is a responsibility in front of everyone, and especially in front of the one who show you and explain you. For example, the master says something. I have a responsibility to be clear enough to transcribe the words he said the best way in order you understand, without lying, without adding. 
And if I add, it needs to bring a positive value. That's why it's not, it's, it's complex. Most of the people, they want to speak Japanese in order to show off, etc., etc. Everyone learn and study the way he wants, according to the filter he have. That's very complicated, very complicated. So um, does it help? Look around, see in Japan, people who, who knows Japanese, does they move, you know, sometimes people said to me, can you explain me this? Can you do this? I say, okay, what? When are you going to do it? You think you're going to move like Takama Sensei right away? <laughs> uh, I think it's a pill. You take it, you transform and bam, shoo, shoo. Here I am. <laughs> If it was that, people who read the Bible, uh, uh, Kabbalah, Quran, uh, Pentateuch, uh, Tao Te King, when they read it, automatically they are changed and they are holy. It's not the case. Some people get crazy. Some people can become terrorists. Some people take out the letter instead of looking the message behind, between, up and down. So, you know, in knowledge, I like to say there is the word edge. You need to be on the edge in order to know. And being on the edge, it hurts. Mm. Responsibility. And in the word responsibility, you have what? The word respond. Mm. I hope I answer enough clear. Okay. So uh, that will be the last question for today. Maybe Wait. in some Wait. other... No, 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 go ahead. Yeah, another have, one. Oh, okay. one. That I would like to ask. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, Come on, Santi. You help a lot. You have the right to ask your question. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alan Vasquez from Mexico asks, what is the reason in Sanshin Nokata uh, names of nature are being used? Mm. Ah, Chisukafuku. The Gogyo Nokata, you mean? Yes. Uh, what is ah. the relationship between the elements and the practice? So it means... You need the, when you strike the fire is gonna come out. <laughs> when you do the, come on, man, we're not in Rise Marvel. The earth. Man. Or when it's the, the, the wind, what is it? You need to. Oh, maybe you can. <laughs> I would love that. That's a little bit too much for a human being to fly like that. Even if I believe. Uh, uh, the relationship first, I mean, I explained this in the, um, oh, very important for all of you to understand me to hear me out. If you go to Omitsukage, most of the time there is class where I explain all those kind of things. And Omitsukage is there for helping. And uh, to, for example, in that case of pandemic, to learn from that. Also, I do some lecture, uh, two per month, you have class and everything. And most of those kind of things, I explain them over there. So uh, if you want to uh, know them more uh, directly, I suggest you to uh, go over there and see. Now, uh, in order to answer very, very small, because Gogyo no Kata Chisuika Fuku come from something called Inyo Gogyo no Setsu Omyodo. So it's, see, it's already a lot. It's um, a knowledge that comes from China that deals with geomancy, uh, uh, positive and negative, uh, yin and yang, uh, opposition, understanding of the earth, etc., etc. And when this came to Japan, It was also used at the court by the aristocracy in order to read whatever. And they add to this Mikyo, and they add to this, of course, the Buddhism, Japanese Buddhism. Then the aspect of Gogyo no Kata was mainly a way to separate and classify things, nothing more. So there is no relation. And if you want to see a relation, why not? It doesn't mean you're going to move better. And all, all the people who are saying, when you move here, is the water, here is the fire. I mean, there is no fire in the human body. We are constituted of 70% of water that's already around. A little bit of wind sometimes that need to get out. But ladies and gentlemen, come on, let's stay logical. It's classical martial art, right? It's for killing. Mm. Right. Well, talking about Alam, uh, it is true that you're gonna come. It is true. <laughs> Uh, that you're gonna come to Latin America soon? Hello, th th thanks to Alan. Yes, we, we talk about this since the last time we met in Los Angeles or a year ago before the pandemic. And uh, uh, I was planned to, I planned uh, a few years ago to go to uh, Mexico a few times. 
uh, with a student who uh, unfortunately could not uh, do it. Uh, his name is uh, Jaime. And uh, now, of course, uh, Alan uh, will find uh, the way to do it. So yes, I, I answer yes. And uh, yes, I'm positive. I'm going to be in Mexico. So uh, after a few years of, uh, you know, up and down, we cannot make it. But this time, yes, I'm very, very happy to be in the, that area. It's going to be good. Of course, everything, the whole seminar will be put on Omitsukagi as well for all the people who would like to watch it or to see it. And I hope uh, maybe some people who can travel to Mexico, people from the country around, I will uh, very, I'm, I'm going to try to answer to everyone and to help the one from my best abilities. Okay. When we have the date, we're going to post it all too, right? And uh, very good luck with that. And uh, we're waiting you in Argentina too. At least, I, at least, I there's. I will. I will. I will. I, I take the word. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I in light at the same time. <laughs> so well, uh, I want to say thank you to everybody and on the other side of the screen for being there, for having patient uh, and the interesting and sharing their time with with us. Uh, we do our best, <laughs> we promise. And uh, thanks, Santi, for everything. You People don't know how stressing is the technical part. <laughs> and he do a terrific you job. Well, and of course, thank you. Thanks. And, of, <laughs> and of course, Mr. Uh, Kasem, <laughs> thank you so much. Caballero, appreciate that. Yeah, exacto. Realmente es un honor conocerte. Un verdadero caballero, puedo decir, aunque sea así virtualmente. Este, y, y muchísimas gracias. Bert, thank you very much for uh, a piece of knowledge and uh, the experience. Uh, it's not, not really a piece of knowledge, it's just a, a coin. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a value coin. And um, uh, We've, if we have another time, it will be great. I don't want to put the compromise, but... <laughs> no, 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 of course. We can, of course. Never say no. Never awesome. say no. Awesome, Never. awesome. Thank you very, very, very much for, for all yeah, your time. Take care of all of you. Keep on practice. Santi, Javier, thank you very much. Thank you for all of you. Thanks for the question. Hope you like it. I hope I didn't hurt anyone's feeling. If it's the case, <laughs> it was not my attempt. And sorry if I was a little bit sometimes straight on the words. Sometimes it's important to be straight on the word and not uh, lie to yourself. Because martial art, if you lie to yourself, you die. Mm -hmm. Classical martial art was this. If you lie in the front of a sword or in the front of a spear, you die. There is no lie in martial art. Real classical martial art. It's the same. Why boxing is cool? Why uh, people go to MMA? Because you go directly into the randori. You lie, you get the fucked up, you get smacked. <laughs> See? Of course mm -hmm. you don't die. But it's another level of truth. Classical martial art is the ultimate truth. You you lie, you die. Mm. Till the day I die. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, yeah. appreciate it. See you next time. And soon going to be uh, the subtitled version in YouTube and also in Spotify. We're going to try our best to so really translate it. Bye-bye, okay. uh, everybody. Bye. 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 Don't go Kassem too. <laughs>